Hello there fellow humans and welcome to another episode of your replays and today we're gonna have a look at some amazing replays and explain how and why they work so that you can also find some tips for it yourself to improve your gameplay as well. Now the first thing that is very important to mention here is that everybody tends to eventually have their own style, especially if you get better at the game. You're going to start to develop your certain style of how you'd like to play. Do you want to sit back more? Do you want to play more aggressive? Do you want to brawl? Do you want to, let's say, do it like here, side scrape in a VK90, which is the perfect vehicle to do that. Right, you essentially want to find out what you enjoy the most and what you are the best at, and ideally those two things are going to be the same. Like, for example, I don't enjoy the Tank Destroyer gameplay, so why would I bother playing Tank Destroyers, for example? And that could be very similar to you, or you could be like, Hey, I don't like how light tanks have to be played, or should be played. I prefer sitting in the back of the corner like a Tank Destroyer player. So... So, I'm about to get a lot of unsubscriptions from Tank Destroyer players there, but you know, you're there, I see you. I don't love you, but I see you. So, here in the VK90, what is very important is use the advantage of the vehicle, right? What is this tank good at? It doesn't have the highest alpha damage, that E100 has a lot higher alpha damage, the BZ has a higher alpha damage, which means you have to peak more often than those two guys. However, what is the advantage of the VK90 right here? Well, it can side scrape quite well, and it also has gun depression over the side of the vehicle, which means it can go down and shoot that BZ. It's what you want to do right there. Always find the advantage towards the enemy. What can your tank do better than the enemy tank? That is very important right here. Because obviously if that E100 gets the advantage of getting into a trade fight. Where he gets one shell. Razvan Fatu here gets one shell. That would be very bad for the VK90. Because the E100 has the advantage in the alpha damage upon him. But... If the VK90 is able to side scrape and catch out this E100 in the middle of nowhere, then obviously the VK has quite a massive advantage right there. And look at that. The VK90 is playing from behind the E100. The 183 is in front of the E100. That is also something very important. And what I like about medium and light tanks, because you can do it a lot better with them, and that is play from two different angles, right? Because if you know that your teammate is in front of the enemy, why would you position yourself there right next to them? You're going to have a tougher time pinning the enemy, and the enemy temp has an easier time to focusing on both of you. So ideally, you want to approach from two different angles, because the gun only points in one way. So if the 183 is one way, and the VK9 is the other way, there is absolutely nothing that can be done. And now, what do you do if you're in a slow vehicle, or two slow vehicles right here, against a light tank like a bat shot encounter nothing essentially you just have to try to find him but in supremacy especially a supremacy mode uh, like here on naval frontier where you can control these two bases quite easily c and d then it makes most sense to simply try to play those bases and obviously the light tank the bat shot in this case is gonna have to uh, try to somehow decap those bases uh, t because if he takes a and b that's not going to help him. He's already down on points quite significantly. So he has to attack right here. So simply just stick on these two bases. Play the stationary combat. And there is nothing else that I need to do here. Because of the chasing a bat shot in a VK90 at 183 is quite a bad idea. Which, uh... Well, what are you going to do else at that point? And this is why. Exactly because of that. Why I don't play Supremacy. And why I love light and medium tanks because you can just dance around the battlefield you can use all the space that you can ever dream of to get extra damage and to always pop up right there where the enemy is not looking i don't want to know how many times i got accused of cheating in counter-strike because i suddenly popped up behind the guy and shot him in the back of the head because if you know where the enemy is going to move eh, you just pop up behind him boom it doesn't work all the time but it is all that satisfying, and that is why I like medium and light tanks. But here, this is the perfect counter to that. Just simply hold these two cap circles. The Batchet can do absolutely nothing besides watch and wait. So if this is what you want to do, right? If you want to play tower defense, basically, or your clash of plans or something like that. And even like that, the Batchet went all the way around. Like, he was close to the sea cap. A minute later, he's on the other side of the map. Did anybody expect that? Certainly not the 183, because he's now dead. So, that is what I love about them. But again, this bad chat is pretty much out of time. He has to go for it now. And Razvan, the best thing to do to defend here is to, first of all, have a very long vehicle. Because the longer your tank is, the 
more of a diameter that the circle has to be or the enemy has to go around, which means they're going to have a tough time actually circling you. And the other thing is, you want to... What's actually not being done here, really, is you want to get your ass back against a wall, for example, of a house. Because, again, you're increasing the diameter of the circle the enemy has to drive to get around you. Which means you will be able to get your gun on point even better. And look at that, how close the Batchat came to even winning that battle. Even with all those disadvantages, it still took a bounce off the VK-90 to decide this battle in favor of the VK-90 right here. That is how dangerous a Batshed is going to be in the hands of a competent player. That's why I like that playstyle, that's why I do it. But, if you're into the heavy kind of style, now you also know what you're going to do if you're fighting a vehicle like that Batshed, right? It did, also did 5,000 damage. But now, we're going to go with another heavy tank. This time, the Rinoceronte, which has two... Uh, um, I don't know if I just made Italians feel good or offend them, but if you're Italian, tell them in the comments, I would appreciate it. And if you have replays that you really want to share and want me to put my pointless commentary on top of it, put it on my Discord server, link to that down in the description. If you find this series useful where I show you a good replay and kind of talk about what's going on, then like, subscribe, I don't know, don't if you don't care. Why are you still here if you don't care? Hello, thank you for watching. But yeah, now here is another thing that I would like to point out, and that is taking positions that are advantageous to you, right? Up here, you've got the cap and you've got the high ground. You really want to have the high ground if you can have it, right? Especially if you have a tank that has a lot of gun depression, you kind of want to have a position like this. But at the same time, you also want to be map aware at all times, right? Perfect spot right there by Shanks to find that WZ and a pullback. Now, obviously, firing the second shell here. It works, right? Map awareness and map positioning is also incredibly important to finding out how you actually want to play the game, right? Because if you want to go in, you want to take the map control. If that's your thing, Absolutely, you're probably the most important player in that match. If that's your thing, or if you're a tank destroyer, you sit at the back of the map and let the team do the rest of the work while you sit at the back, farm 4,000 damage, while nothing happens. Basically. Already, 3,000 damage in two minutes. So the enemy team has demonstrated quite well here why you ideally shouldn't brawl when you're in a massive disadvantage. That Kranwagen who's now getting shot at, like I just said a couple of minutes ago. The Rhinoceronte shooting at from one side. And the other teammate over there is shooting at the Kranwagen from the other side. And there is obviously no way for that Kranwagen to defend himself from both sides. So no matter what you choose your style to be, this is what you have to do. Right? You always want to crossfire people whenever you can. You never want to be in the exact same place that your teammates are because you're most likely just going to end up blocking each other or you're just, you know, not get anything done or you both just die. The, he, he tried. The Kronwagen did dry for, for his sake, but now here comes the VK90. He has the advantage, sort of, because he's in the high ground. But as you can see, Shanks plays very close to the ground here, using this little ridge to his advantage. Because the VK90, while it does have 10 degrees of gun depression over the side, it can't peek down that far. Now, again, perfectly spotted. Guy coming up from behind. You don't want to deal with that. So you push forward, take out the VK. That is the bigger threat. Now you have to be very careful that there is no possible crossfire. But looking at the minimap, we can see there isn't. Because the other two enemies are in a different place. Now go for the track shot right there to hold the Arctiga. Because of the Arctiga has alpha damage that could finish Shanks off, so you would want to ideally track him and wait for the whole raid to come around the back to put the second shell in. And now, hide! Perfect, just like that. Now, you can see Shanks is firing the first shell uh, quite a lot, but it's not really that damaging because he's still done 6,000 damage. So, remember, you don't have to ever play perfect, right? And that is also something that I would really love to point out right here. Like, your play does not have to be perfect to be the winning play, right? It just has to be good enough to be better than what the enemy is doing. And 
I don't really know what the WZ and the STB were doing there, but once again, Shanks is holding this position right here. He's holding the high ground, and he's forcing the enemy to come towards him. And any space that the enemy team is forced to cover is extra time for you to think and sort of extra protection for you to, for example, reload, reposition, turn your vehicle towards a better angle. So you never really want to be too close. Like, even if you play a mouse or an E100, you never really want to be face-hugging anybody, unless you're a VK-72, but I think that's probably the only exception that's, like, really good at face-hugging. Uh, but generally, you don't really want to be too close to the enemy. You don't want to be too far away, but you don't want to be too close either, because if you're too close, then the enemy can make a very easy and simple move on you, which you kind of don't want. Let's further expand on this whole space thing, because no matter how you play the game, you always need space to move around. If you're cornered in to a tiny portion of the map, you simply have no space to do whatever you want, whether that be side scraping over rock, playing hull down, uh, ring around the rosier houses, or whatever you want to do. You always are going to need some distance and space to do that. So in this case, this is not starting off very well, because most of the time you want to take the medium side and the middle of a map to have most optimal map control. So by going city and remaining there, you're essentially already putting yourself at quite a big disadvantage. However, Small's team here are gonna do the one thing, playing city, that works if the enemy team isn't in the city. Obviously, if both teams are in the city, it kind of cancels each other out and it turns into a stupid peak fest that you generally always want to avoid because then it just comes down to RNG who can pen each other more likely so that's not a fun play to do. Now what is happening here? The team is pushing into the enemy spawn while the enemy team is not doing the same back which means they have pretty much given up control over 70% of the map right here. Now the E50M is trying to be the hero here pushing forward because there are the Sheridan and the, the heavy tank, the Renault's Ronte over there, that are somewhat isolated, that will end up in a three, maybe four versus two. But is that already too late? A little bit weighted there. Now, another little quick injection here. If you have a shot like that, just take the shot, right? If the shot is starting to disappear as you're aiming in, just take the shot because you're not going to get it anyway. So fire it, forget about it. If it hits, great. If it doesn't, oops. Now, Small here decides to actually help out the Sheridan, which you might assume to be a mistake, but it is also very important to understand when can you stay, when can you leave, when it is more beneficial to leave a teammate to die, or when it is going to be more beneficial to help that teammate out. Because if an enemy is currently one on one, then helping that teammate is going to be very good. But if there are four enemies on one of your teammates and uh, they're already low, there is no way in hell you can do anything to help that teammate survive, and the only thing that's going to happen is once the teammate's dead, you're going to get gobbled up next. So again, you want to, if you can, help from a distance, and that is what Small here is trying to create again, while displaying excellent driving style. I mean, I have been playing this game for 10 years, and I can't drive either, so it's perfectly fine. It's just the, the nature of the keyboard, I guess. So, again, keep the distance and also find yourself opportunities on the battlefield where is the one remaining teammate the vk90 the vk90 is currently distracting this e100 the e100 is not fighting anybody those other two heavy guys they're not fighting anybody they're not going to be busy with anything which means they are going to be hounding quite quickly but the e100 he's distracted luckily he's on fire now now here comes another guy from the back so you want to take out this e100 very quickly because he's a very easy target and now get away from that guy to make sure that the E5 can't get help from the 114 SP. Right, because you want to kill. How, how did he not pen that? It doesn't make any sense. But you want to make sure that the E5 here doesn't get help from the 114 SP uh, because you have a two on one. Ideally, if you're the 114 SP, you don't want to uh, go right where he is now. You want to go around the outside and uh, Approach from a different angle because otherwise obviously the grill can fight in front of it the entire time it doesn't have any armor so that's not a point but it can still fight in front of it the entire time and I have honestly no idea what the hell that E5 is doing that just is complete stupidity at this point and the 114 he's 
not really firing too much. And what I would do now, and that's probably going to happen, is just, just, just pray. 4.7k damage right here. Grill has no armor whatsoever. Just rams himself into the VK90. Very wonderful driving right there. The grill doesn't even have a traversable turret, so the... Yep. Yep. That's it. That is it. Which is very sad. But... What has to be noted is that it's still a very valiant effort, and... At the end, it simply came down to those heavies closing the distance too quickly. And small yet bodacious boy not being able to get out, find himself a more optimal position possibly to engage Rom and then being pulled into a close quarters fight in a 1v2 that's basically unwinnable. So avoid that. Always make sure to find yourself. First of all, find the space on the battlefield and then use that space on the battlefield no matter how you play. Even if you play in a tank destroyer, you always want to find and use that space that you have available. Right, because if you don't, then you're just throwing away literal free real estate in terms of the map. And now, well, we can look on the media map. We can see that the medium is stupid going to the C cap, which is um, always very disappointing. If you are a medium tank player and you do go to the heavy tank side, then uh, why are you stupid? It can work in a late battle situation, for example, where you know where all the enemies are. And you can use the city side or the heavy tank side to flank through and change position. But if you go to the heavy side at the very start of the battle in the medium, there's no point in, in doing that. Like, it makes way more sense to, if you really want to brawl with heavy tanks in your medium, to go to the middle and try to find out the enemy team split. Because that's also going to be very important. Like, are they all condensed in one part of the map? Are they split up between the parts of the map? Like, do you have six guys on one side, you have one guy on the other side. For example, that's exactly what's happening here. Also, there seems to be one AFK heavy tank, which is also going to be quite a big problem. So, I have no idea what this person's name actually is supposed to mean, so I'm just going to call him Dave. I'm the... No, I, I'm not the Mighty Jungles, but here we are. So, it makes a lot of sense here to just fight this T95, because you know he's alone. You count the enemies on the minimap. So, you know, he's alone. You have an autoloader, which means all you're gonna do is unload the clip and then run away. The T95 is quite quick, so it's gonna be a pretty big problem to run away. But, you still have the autoloader. You have that advantage. Again, remember, always know what your tank's advantages are. Batchet is faster and has the clip. So, if you order the T95 in that case, you have to close the distance. Very close range fight to go over the DPM. Which isn't really that much higher than the Batchet anyway. But the Batcha can unload its DPM in bursts, which means that if you're the Batcha, you want to fire the clip, use your mobility, get some distance, then reload, and then close the distance again to ideally circle the guy, right? So you always want to play around the advantages of the vehicle. And I guess you've got to commend the T95 for trying to come out here and fight this area, but at the end, that is a lost cause, especially because the medium on that team has simply just decided to abandon in the first place, which, if he wouldn't have, then the Batcha probably would have been dead right here. Now, again, here are two Tankstros at the back of the map, using the entire space available, approaching this 183 right from behind and taking him out, and that is very important if you are playing a light and medium tank that you don't play from the exact same spot. Than the rest of your team does. In a heavy tank, this can be like a hundred meters away, like a slight off angle. But in a medium tank, you want that to be basically the opposite side of the map that you're approaching from, because you can. Like, the battle is seven minutes long. You can fight the enemy at any time, and ideally you always want to fight the enemy before your team dies, or before the enemy team dies, because your team did all the work for you. But... If you have space and you have time, you would be quite stupid to not use that space and time to your advantage. Especially in a vehicle like this one. Whereas now the Badger is busy. Three versus four. This is going to get quite problematic. Now the Badger here, he's the easiest target to take out. Well, again, remember, think about what the easiest target you can fight is. What is the easiest target you can fight? Well... Ideally, one that's not looking at you and one that's low HP with no armor. Or 
one that's just low HP and is looking at you and is a badger. Now again, we have a KPZ-70 here who's not looking at the bat shadow here. But obviously, one caveat here is that it only really works if you already are a good player to play like this. Because if you're not, you're kind of just wasting your team's hit points. So to pull off this kind of playstyle where you just dance around the enemy team from the complete opposite of the map, you already kind of have to be a good player because you have to trade your team's hit points effectively um, to actually win that battle. And that is 6,000 damage there while mostly being engaged by the T95, really, and then a little bit by the Badger and the VK. Rightfully so, turns around and finishes off the Bad Chat because the Bad Chat was the most dangerous and easiest to kill target for the VK. So the VK played it right there. And now we change the tank to the one that we just defeated and the T95 E6. See, this position right here, that's pretty much the position I play every single game on this map. Especially in a fast heavy or a medium tank. I, I personally don't play slow heavies or tank destroyers. So I don't go up to the um, CD cap side like we saw in the first battle. Personally, that's what I don't play. Um, but this is kind of the, the position that you want to take because you can spot a quite big portion of the map. And you can fire at quite a big portion of the map. You just have to be careful what comes from the bottom or the beach. Now, 183 is dead. You can see the enemy team. Just look at the minimap, right? You know that there is nobody helping this BZ. You have a DPM advantage. You can see the BZ's massive gun that has a lot less DPM than this vehicle. So you can just simply DPM fight this guy right here. Once again, understanding the position that you're in. The position the enemy that you're currently fighting in. And the all the other enemies. Where they are. Now the Fosh is coming back. Now the T-4 is coming back. Now you really can't fight that BZ as easily anymore. And you have to pull back. So just simply YOLOing that BZ would now be a bad idea. But you still want to try and take him out. Because obviously he's low HP and he's a very easy target. Even though now the T-54 presents himself quite uh, willingly to receive a lot of shells. So you might as well go for that. And um, I have... Like, this is exactly how you don't play a medium tank. Like we saw last battle in the bat chat. That it can end badly if the enemy happens to turn around. So when you play like that T-54, and you do try to flank, always make sure that you have a sufficient amount of hit points and that you have sufficient enough backup that you don't just get wrecked and die. Right? Because that's what happened right here. And now the Fosh is just pushing forward for some reason. Now Shanks is going to track him right here and get away. Now there's a Batshot 25T there. And there is a Heavy on the other side. So whatever this Fosh was thinking... What was he thinking? Like, he's engaging... Three tanks that are all three positioned at different angles. In a tank destroyer. Like, you can push in a Fosh if the guy is right in front of you. Like, straight. But you can't push in a Fosh if there's three guys spread around the battlefield. Like, here's the thing. There's one thing that you're going to take away from this video. There's one thing that all these people have in common. And that is game awareness. Right? All of these players know where to go, where not to go, what fights they can win, what fights they can't win and therefore shouldn't fight in the first place, what places of the map they can go to, what places the enemies can be in, all of those kind of things. So think while you're playing and then you'll be better. Goodbye.